to introduce Sam as someone who knows him really well and someone we all know and love, you know, Joe Broadhurst. Well, thank you. Um, well, I suppose um, it's pretty nice to be surrounded by sensational paintings and um, you probably really don't have to go outdoors at all after you've been here. You just have to pack it all in and store it and just enjoy it all. Um, so I'll say a welcome to Jarlock Gallery for this exhibition of Sam Broadhurst paintings titled Beyond My Studio Window. Um, I'd like to thank the owners of Jarrock, uh, Joe and David Paris, uh, Lara and Gary Bennett, and all those who work here. They've done a fabulous job and um, they've really brought you know, the arts in this area to a whole new level. Um, and I'd also like to thank them for uh, bringing such quality work from elsewhere into Margaret River so we can see it, and it's great. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Sam's family. Um, there's the boys, Luke, Harry and Ben, and also, uh, who are also very creative kids. Well, not kids now, they're bloody adults. So, yeah, they grew up some. Um, and his wife, Anne, who is incredibly supportive to Sam's practice. I think it's a, it's a, a necessary partnership. Um, Sam does have a beautiful studio. It's a very spacious place. Um, it was going to be a garage for two cars, but <laughs> the cars can go outside. They can, you know, they, they can park out there. But, and inside his studio, he does have a great window that looks into the bush. And uh, it's all its colours, its hues and its textures. And it's no wonder, I suppose, that this has been an inspiration for the exhibition. Sam, um, Sam is probably the hardest working artist I know. Um, his commitment uh, to the authenticity and spirit of the landscape is really second to none. Uh, look, I, I, I do a little personally too. I, I, the other day I was walking along Narrabup <laughs> Beach and I, I go down there for a swim every morning and um, above, the, above the ocean there was these dark brooding clouds and the eastern horizon was clear. The sun came up, it shone down onto this um, on this ocean, and the ocean gave up a blue that I've never seen it before. It was just beautiful, and the um, the white water of the waves was almost electrically white. It was um, it was such a stunning thing, and um, and I thought this is one of those beautiful moments in nature. They fill your heart, and it's um, and this emotional, heartfelt response to a real landscape is what Sam draws from you through his application of paint on canvas. Mm. Right? He captures on canvas what we feel in our hearts when we personally witness the beauty of this place that we, we are in right now. Many of these paintings take years to reach fruition. He will revisit a place many times um, to get the composition and the placement, or as Sun calls it, the shape of the landscape. Um, he wants to be present in the landscape as it takes time to sense the connection to each site that he paints in. Many sketches are done for colour and form, photographs taken, spaces revisited, uh, and this individual language of the paint is learned, and like writers with their words, so of you are very good at it. Sam is brilliant. Um, Sam also uh, understands the old and the new, the history of art, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, the palette works you see over here, or you know, various other palette works, um, are using the old medium of oil paints mixed with his walnut oil, um, but using a, uh, a modern technique of the palette knife to, uh, to apply to the canvas. Um, the finer acrylic paintings are a modern medium uh, painted with the old and careful tradition of brushwork. That this is these beautiful fine paintings. Sam um, he constantly continues to develop his practice. He's a true artist who lives, breathes and feels his work. It's a complete body and mind experience, which is why these works around you, they're, they're so alive. I'm sure of you, all of you here tonight would agree that perhaps commerce and industry are the engines of our society, but art is the real heart of our society, I think. I can assure you all that taking one of these beautiful paintings home will bring happiness and vibrancy to yourselves, and daily and give you joy to those who come and visit you. 
thank you all very much for coming. And um, I'd like now to introduce uh, Sam to talk a little bit about his work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, here I am. Um, last night, I thought it was such a rush for me to get here. I was still working on that painting, spraying the varnish on. <laughs> and it takes about five days to get the varnish. It's not a rush job. And then in the morning, I had to um, re-stretch it, pull the frame out, redo it again. And then I got here. And so I'm just saying there's a commitment to what I'm doing. It's not some quick and easy job. It is just, um, sometimes it's a hard slog, but it's a slog with passion and with heart. And what I'm trying to show in my work is a stillness and a clarity. And those two words, it's like looking at this, there's a stillness at that spot at that time. Mm -hmm. And there's a clarity. And also with the palette knife, there's a clarity in the sense of purpose. Even though my arm is moving, it's a different process. It's a different way of thinking. Like I have to do a block of work in this way, and then I have to do a block of work in this way. I can't do that one day and then that another day because it's a completely different process. So with the palette knife, I'm standing and I'm moving my arms and my shoulders and I'm walking back and forth. And then sometimes the studio isn't big enough, so I've got to step outside the studio and look at an angle through the window. <laughs> and sometimes I look at it at night, I get a reflection bouncing in the window at night. That's really good because it shows the image in reverse. And I'm looking for shapes, like there's shapes here, shapes there, shapes there. So it's all about shapes and colour and placement. There's shapes and placement with this one, but when I'm doing this one, I can't stand because I need total focus. I have to sit and I have to just work on that little area. I cover that area with an undercoat first off and then I build up the layers and it's a really old technique. <coughs> um, it dates from about, oh, about 1400s. Um, they call it Botu Yando. And I thought, where's this technique come from? So what I did, I went to, this was going back about 2009. I went to a Renaissance exhibition and I had a look and I found it. And I can see it in people's work. And it started off in manuscripts doing egg paint, mm -hmm. which is a water-based paint. And it's a very slow, methodical building of layers, weaving colour with a very small brush. It's just this constant weaving. So that's, it works, but it's slow. It's just a slow process. And then I sort of get to the answer. It's like I'm working on this painting and I'm thinking, I could keep going for a year on this, but I've got to stop, I've got to stop, because I've got to move on to another painting, and sometimes it's good to stop. <laughs> so it's good to stop. Um, but I remember doing this one here, and I took the drain up, and I've been there a few times, and I've missed it, and I just got it about five minutes before the sunset, and then a cloud was moving across, and I just got it in time. So it's clouds come in, then I have to, have to wait for the swell to come up the right direction, had to wait for the river to be flowing out there. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a bit of a gamble and you wait for that moment. It's waiting. It's a bit like um, hunting. I call it hunting for pictures, <laughs> hunting for the right moment. <laughs> you just sit there and you wait. It's like I go along, if I'm on the land, like this one here, I'm sitting and I think there's something here. I don't know what it is. There is something there and you just sense it and it's, um, there's a connection. You have to feel the presence and it doesn't happen. That's why I have to keep coming back. So I have to keep coming back to the same spot and it's feeling it. And I'll go back there for years. And I think I've got paintings from 10 years ago. I think no, I haven't quite got it. I haven't quite got it. I need to go back. <laughs> so um, it's connection. 
And that's what I'm trying to convey is this connection. What I feel, and it's taking time out, putting your phone down, and I hate it when somebody rings me on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's sort of like just sitting there and doing nothing. And landscape, I think we're all here in this area. A lot of us is because of landscape. You know, we get away from the city. We've got to disconnect and appreciate our environment a little bit more. Um, appreciate ourselves a little bit more as well. Like you connect with the landscape, you connect with yourself. Um, that's really what it's about for me, and I'm hoping to convey that to other people. Um, I better talk about the walnut oil. Um, <coughs> that's been a, a particularly long exercise, that one, that I've been working on for, I think, um, about 14 years. Um, and it's been a bit of a quest to find a medium, and it's here, and it shows it here, the problem with linseed oil is it yellows and it goes orange and you can see it there. So it's been a challenge to get it not to yellow, to say the least. So I've been looking at old books, old copies, um, finding out, trying to find out techniques. I found a, there was a few lines by Da Vinci. Um, I read that and I thought, wow, that's really different. Um, and it didn't make sense, but then what happened is I found another book. It was in the um, London National Gallery. I did a publication, and they said it was incorrect. But then I found the reference, got the book from Sydney, and it was correct. And it's just a way of purifying the oil that's a little bit different. It's like putting a jigsaw together, how to do it. Like Da Vinci had the idea, but two thirds of his manuscripts have been lost. So you've only got a portion of it. Mm -hmm. So I had to fill in all the gaps and I use my chemistry as well. It's a matter of pressing the walnut oil like I've got a press, I don't know where the press is. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that's the beginning. Then I've got to purify. Then I've got to heat it. But it's the purification, it's the heating. And it gives me an oil that hardly yellows, it doesn't wrinkle. And it comes in handy doing this because when you do painting in thick oil, it can wrinkle. So I don't want it to wrinkle. And then an another um, piece to the puzzle was by Van Gogh. I was reading his writings to his brother Theo, and he said he had a problem with his oils. And the problem he had was that the oil was <coughs> rising to the surface. So he knew it was a, a serious problem for him, and he was getting his brother to say, You've got to wash it off with with spirits of alcohol. So he knew it was a problem. So I thought, okay, latest research, oil continues to go to the surface. So I've got to stop it rising to the surface. So I found that, so I found out how to stop it. So um, that sort of shows a little bit of that there, but it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's, it's, I come from a science background. I like learning. I love to learn, I don't sit still, I like reading, I'm curious about my mind, I'm thinking, I'm always a why person, how does that happen, why is this happening, you know, why in nature? So it's not just a matter of sitting there and just racking up a photo and walking home and that's it. I'm always curious about the world, I'm curious how it works, it's just me as a person, I like to, I like to think, so I'm a thinking person. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, that's about it. So look at the sketchbooks, you can get a rough idea. And I was explaining to someone before, with a sketchbook, what I do is I try and, it's like solving a problem. And the problem is, I'm feeling something, how do I share it with other people? So with the sketches, I go, where does the edge of the picture stop? What is my main focal point? How do I direct the eye? And let's say I'm looking at this sketch, but this painting here, where does the eye go? The eye's got to go through here, there's a diagonal coming through here, so it pushes your eye up through here, that point pushes you along here, and then you come back down here. So it keeps this eye moving. See? So it's always thinking where to cut the picture, where does the eye go? So it's, it's always just what I'm about. Um, it's not just a painting. So, um, 
Any questions? <laughs> I think that sums it up. I keep talking forever, but <laughs>